Sunday. Sunday school. Alright? Tomorrow's the first day of school. And tomorrow's the first day of school. Wow. Y'all are all excited about that, I can tell already. I'm excited the girls. Yeah? Like the girls. What? Alright, we're going to start off with Mark chapter number 6, verse 34. I can see nobody brought their Bibles. Mark, you don't have one. Why do we not have Bibles? Find a Bible. You need to get your Bible if you don't. Make sure you get a Bible. Oh, come here, girl. Alright, Mark 6, 34 says... We just need one, y'all need more. Get them up. And uh, Jesus, when he came out, saw much people <coughs> and was moved <coughs> with compassion. Hello, Mitch. Toward them, because they were as sheep not having a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. What did he teach them? Many things. Many things. That means a whole lot of stuff. Why? Why did the, the Lord decide to teach the people? He was moved with compassion. He saw the people. He saw the people did not understand God. He knew that these people had no idea. They've been, been doing things religiously their whole life. They had lived their life the way they were brought up. And they did not know nothing about God. Or how to serve God. How to love God. They didn't know anything. And so he, he looks at them as sheep not having a shepherd. Nobody's leading them. There's no leader. You know, a shepherd, you know what he does? He protects the sheep. He's got a big stick. And when uh, David, when uh, the bears and the lions and the tigers all came toward him to kill his sheep, you know what he did? He took out his, his staff and he went up there and he protected the sheep. You know why? That was his job. He loved those sheep. He would check their eyes to see if they had sheep had a problem with eyes they would get stuff in their eyes like you know it, it was like worms and, and sometimes you would have to you'd have to get the stuff and you had to put it inside your eyes now in school one of the problems sometimes kids get what's the biggest problem that they get flu lice that's right flu that's another one Okay? Alright? And so you got to check them. you got to check and see. Do you got them? And if you do, we got to take care of it. You cannot live, and you can't go to school with lice the rest of your life. They must be taken care of. Does anybody enjoy it? their hair to be washed and, and, it, and it to itch and it to smell and it to you know hurt now you got my head scratching I want to scratch my head you know because I feel all this talk about my I can't help it. You know. so but what I'm saying is Jesus had compassion and, and he was telling them how to be a good sheep you know what a good sheep does drinks water. It eats green grass. There are certain things that you shouldn't eat. Why? Come on, Mitch, tell me why. It's bad for you. If you eat certain foods, guess what happens? You may not like it. If I served you a can of cat food, and put it in a big fancy bowl and said, here you go. And I, and I put it in the microwave and said, go ahead, eat, enjoy yourself. Here's a big bowl of dog food. I mean, put a little water in it, mix it.
mix it up, make some gravy, dark, dark. You know what? That's not good for you. Lots of hot sauce. Alright? You can't put a whole thing on this. You know why? Because that's not what we're meant to eat. The Lord, He saw these sheep and He said, then I'm not act like sheep. And, and you young people, a lot of young people, they don't know how to act like Christians. You have no idea how to act like a Christian. You've never been taught. And so the Lord, guess what he did? He taught them. He taught them many things. All kinds of things. Now, I don't know about your parents. Mom, dad, but you know what? There's certain things I teach. I teach my children. I am very paranoid. I like to sit at a restaurant with my back to the wall. You know why? Because if somebody comes in with a gun, I'm ready to flip the table over and I'm ready to start ducking. And hopefully somebody else has a gun and we're going to start shooting back. You know why? I learned to be paranoid because I follow people. I don't want to be robbed. I look around, see if there's anybody. All right, I mean, that's just the way I am. Money. I teach my children pay your bills, pay them, and pay more than what's due. Pay as much as you can because six months down the line, you may lose your job, but if you've got the electricity paid for six months, guess what? You don't have to worry about it. You're good. You don't have to worry about them repossessing your car. You're good. You don't have to worry about all this stuff. You know why? Because I taught them, you must pay not only your bills, but pay them more. More than what's due. So that way, I can live in this house and I don't have to work for six months. I get another job. In six months, I'll find another job. But guess what? They won't repossess this house. You know why? It's been paid for. These are things that must be taught. You must be taught different things. And what Jesus taught them was how to live in this world and be a Christian, a sheep. How to live for God. Now, it doesn't matter what age group you are, whether you're old or whether you're young, everybody needs instruction. You know the first thing everybody thinks of when they're 18? I'm the best driver in the world. I'm the, I'm number one. I tell you what, you know, I can do, don't worry about that. I'll never hit a car. Right. I'll never, you know, my car is going to last forever. Right. You know what you find out? Reality hits. All those lessons that your parents taught you. Check the oil. Check the water. Check the transmission fluid. Check the battery. Make sure the, the belts are tight. Make sure everything's fine. You're going to find out your parents were actually right. Check the tire pressure. You know why? Because if you don't learn these lessons, get what's happened? You're going to be sitting on the side of the street calling AAA. Hopefully, you have AAA. If you don't have AAA, you better get AAA. The Lord taught the disciples many things. We don't have the Lord. He's sitting at the right side, the right hand of, of the Lord God our Almighty in heaven. But He did leave us a Bible. You know why you need to read your Bible? Yeah. Did you know that you'll either go forward with God or you'll go backwards with God? 
There is no stand, no, there is no standing still. You either grow up or you stand still. Some of you look very cute right now. But if you were to stay like this and you're 21, guess what? There's something wrong with you. There's just something wrong with you. You gotta learn to grow up. Who else teaches us? Luke 12, 12, for the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. Inside, if you're born again and you're saved, the Holy Ghost lives inside of you. You know what he's going to do? He's going to teach you. Not only does the Bible teach you, but the Holy Ghost teaches you. Uh-uh. Don't do that. Uh-uh. No. Now, Mitch, it's going to be hard. Because if you're going to the military, guess what? They're going to make fun of you. You don't drink? You don't smoke? You don't cuss? You going to be able to handle that? Are you going to be mad enough to be a Christian? Or are you going to be a wimp and just say, okay, well, everybody else is doing it. I guess I better do it too. Which one are you going to be? The Holy Ghost inside is going to say, Mitch, say no. Say no. Say no. There's going to be some beautiful girl that's going to say, Mitch. Say yes. And you know what Mitch is going to do? Listen, you're a beautiful young lady. I appreciate the offer. But I'm saving myself for someone special. There'll be some young men, young ladies, in your life. You know what you got to decide? Am I going to give myself away? The Holy Ghost will tell you, don't do it. No. <coughs> Sometimes the Holy Ghost will tell you to do things. It'll say, and that got a track. Now, if you don't have any tracks, then you got to have them a track. If you don't have a track, how are you going to give him a track? If he says invite him to church, how you, you know, you have a choice. Either obey God, obey the Holy Ghost, or you don't. I can see you didn't like that at all. All right, we'll give you another one then. Jesus teaches, the Bible teaches, the Holy Ghost teaches. And daily in the temple and every house they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Who was that? That was the disciples. The preachers. You know what my job is? My job is to teach you knuckleheads how to live for Christ. My job is to teach you. You will have, when you go into the military, a sergeant. You know what his job is? To teach you to stay alive. That's his job. He will cuss at you. He might even kick you. Uh, I don't know if they still do that. Uh, but he will definitely yell at you, all right? You know why? He trying to, he trying to keep you safe. You know what them preachers do? They're trying to keep you safe. Hey Amen. Do what the Bible says. Little sheep. Do what the Holy Ghost says. That's what the preacher job. That's what the preachers is. The preacher is just to say the same thing that the Bible says. My job is no different than the Bible, except I speak a little louder. I talk a little louder. The Holy Ghost will talk in a small, still voice. Not me. I'm going to boom. When you hear my voice, you're going to know I'm here. You know why? I'm a preacher. And as a preacher, my job is to teach you. You're either going to grow up to be a Christian and a fine young man, or you're going to be a thug and go to jail, and go to prison. You get to decide. You get to 
be either a fine Christian young lady. I don't even want to. I don't even want to think about the other thing that could happen. We better keep going. First Corinthians eleven fourteen. Does not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it's a shame unto him? You know who else does teaching? Nature. Now, before you start laughing, imagine if somebody, male or female, decided, you know what, I'm just going to take off all my clothes and run down the neighborhood. <laughs> you, you know what, somebody, nature is going to say, that's the craziest thing in the world I've ever seen in my life. That's just plain wrong. Why are they doing that? You know why? That's nature. Nature tells you there are certain things you should not do. Smoke. Why are you going to smoke this stuff? I mean, nature talk, teaches us that long hair, you look at a man and you go, hey, nature says, hey, they look like a girl. You know, when a man, I know it's fashionable now, you know, men wearing earrings. I see old men wearing earrings all the time. And I'm thinking to myself, you have drank the Kool-Aid. You have drank the Kool-Aid and now you want to look like a girl. Because girls wear earrings, not boys, not men. Nature. I can't help it if he wants to be like a girl. I wouldn't call that. All I can tell you this is, as a sheep, you have to decide. Now, do I tell this guy he's got an earring and he looks like a girl? Yep. Nah, I better not because you know what? I better tell him about the love of Christ first. I better tell him about the mercy of Christ first. And then, after he gets saved, then I'll tell him. Okay. you got to know when and when. Does that make sense? That's learning. That's learning. That's learning. You have to learn when. When not to. There's a time. People tell you all the time, I'm saved. I don't care if it's your family, your friends your neighbors, and you look at them and you go, I doubt it. I don't believe it. You know why? Nature even tells you that. <laughs> Nature even says, they're not a Christian. They don't act like a Christian. They don't talk like a Christian. They don't dress like a Christian. They don't, I mean, I just, you can tell me all day long, but I don't believe it. Nature tells you that. Nature will teach you. I can see you didn't like that. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor absurd authority over the man, but to be in silence. What does that mean? A woman should not be a preacher. You see a woman preacher? Guess what? She's not doing what the Bible says. Guess what? That means I can't trust her. She may have some good stuff to say. I know some women preachers that are on television. They actually preach better than some of the men. But you know what? She's not following the book. Just because you're better at something, if the book says don't do it, don't do it. What can a woman teach? Well, an older woman. What's an older woman? Well, it depends on who they're teaching. Susie is now 19. Teenagers, younger children, younger young ladies, she should be teaching. My wife is older. She should be teaching. What should, should they, the age women likewise, that they be in behavior, becoming holiness, not false accusers, not giving them much, to much wine. Teachers of good things. What are they supposed to teach? Good things. What's a good thing? Ah, huh? clean your room. Yeah. Eat your vegetables. Oh. Take a bath. Brush your teeth. Those are good things. You don't like them. Wear clean clothes. We're tired. We're tired of smelling you. You smell bad. Wear some clean clothes. Take a bath. Brush your teeth. 
that they may teach the young women to be sober. What is sober? Not drink? No. This word sober also means to be serious. The Christian life is a serious life. When they start making fun of you, Mitch, you better be sober. You better be sober. You better be willing to take a beating. You understand that? Because you may have to take a beating. If you're going to live for God, you may just have to take a beating. And what the older women are supposed to do is teach the young women to be sober, take things seriously, to love their husbands. You know why? Husbands are the worst people in the world. They leave their dirty underwear, you know, everywhere. Who has to wash it? The wife. Who has to do the cooking? The wife. Who has to do the cleaning? The wife. They must be taught to actually love this dummy. Because sometimes he's rude. Sometimes he stinks. Sometimes he forgets things like anniversaries, birthdays. So you know what you got to teach him? you got to learn to teach them to love their husband. Why? Because he ain't perfect. <coughs> you know, that's the hardest thing for him to understand. Uh, we was at a wedding yesterday, and they said, I do, I do, I love him, I love her. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. Yeah, well, that's all good and fun right now because everything's fine and dandy. But wait till the bills don't get paid. Wait till there's no groceries to be cooked. And the wife has to learn how to make something to eat with whatever we got. The wife has to learn. I got to start doing something. Washing clothes for somebody. Cleaning houses for somebody. Babysitting for somebody. I got to make a little extra money because my husband doesn't make enough money. But I still got to love him. Not only is he supposed to, uh, not only is the aged women to teach the, how to love their husband, how to love their children. I mean, look at these little brats right here. You got to teach them how to love their 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 children. Because sometimes parents look at their children, and you know what we want to do? We want to kill you. We want hey. You got an F again? You didn't brush your teeth again? You didn't change again? You didn't take a bath again? You know what you got to do? You got to teach them to love. Love, love, listen to me now. Love has to be taught. Not only for the husband, not only for the children, let me say this, for God. You gotta learn. You gotta learn. You got they gotta teach them how to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Ladies, when you're not teaching, when you're not obeying your husband, guess what? You are blaspheming the word of God. You're a blasphemer. That's pretty serious, don't you think? You know why I didn't say that for men? Because we're idiots. You know, we just go we're all walking around, you know, going, we got to make money, we got to go to work, we got to do this, we got to do that. I mean, you know, we're kind of like robots, all right? You know, you know, we get a little emotional, we hug our wives here and there, tell them we love them, but that's about all we can do. But the wife is more 
children and her husband. But I have seen women get bitter. Why? They don't like their husband no more. They don't like their children no more. They don't want to be around their grandchildren no more. They're bitter old women. And they're blasphemers. So what do you got to do? You got to learn how to love. Well, you say, I don't know how to love. Well, the Bible says in James 1.5, And if you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. He'll give it to all men liberally. And unbridled not, and it shall be given him. You know what you got to do? You got to say, hey, hey, Lord, this is me. I don't know how to be a Christian. Can you help me? You know what God said? I'll help you, Mitch. I'll help you, Susie. All you got to do is ask me. I'll help you. I'll give you the wisdom. You know what you're going to need? You're going to need wisdom. I, I mean, it's hard to love a guy that walks in the door and he, he smells, he's dirty, you know, and the only thing, the only word he has is, what's for dinner? We gotta eat. That's it. What? What? No three course meal? What's the problem here? I mean, when I was growing up, guess what? We, you know what we ate? They called it the magical to tostada. It was a corn tortilla with lettuce, tomatoes, hot sauce, beans. And that's it. No meat. You know why? That's all we had to eat. You know what you got to learn how to do? You got to learn how to do the best you can. I better give you another. For when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need one to teach you again. Some of you have already learned this. You've learned it all your life. But guess what? you got to learn all over again. You know why you read your Bible every day? And you don't read it 20 times? Because you don't forget it! You know why you're going to need this lesson in about three or four more years? Maybe sooner? Because it went in one ear and came out the other. Because you're an airhead. You're just a plain old ordinary airhead. When in one ear came out the other. You didn't listen. So instead of you becoming a teacher and helping somebody, you got to sit there and you got to learn all this all over again. I mean, do you remember your ABCs? How to multiply? How to subtract? How to divide? Do you know how to live for God, how to act for God, how to talk, how to dress, how to witness, how to give, financially, emotionally, spiritually? Do you know these things? Are you doing them? sitting in 
church all your life, but you never got in the game. Get in the game. Get in the game. There are souls that need Christ. You know what you got to do? You got to get in the game. So let me ask you this. Have you learned anything? Or are we wasting our time here? Hey, hey, I'm talking to you. Are we playing games? Or are you learning something? Do you want to be living for Christ? Are you even saved? Do you want to live for Christ? Or is it just a big game to you? Huh, boys? Is this just a game? Because there's a real heaven and there's a real hell. And I hate to tell you this, but when you got saved, God played a trick on you and said, I want you in the game. Now go out there and play. Let's see how many souls you can witness to. And let's see how many you can win to Christ. Are you up here only? And just listen? Or are you a doer? And you actually do something. You pray. You read your Bible. And you witness. And you give. You give of your time. You give of your money. You give. You give. Which one are you? Or do you even care? Father, we love you. I want to thank you for the Sunday school hour. I pray, God, that you'd help uh, these young folks, Lord, to understand. We're supposed to be Christians. And we're supposed to do what you ask of us. Help us, God, to get in the game. And not just be a hearer, but a doer. Help us, I pray. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen.